Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you this week. Justin James Bridges is standing by, ready to play some music for us. Welcome back to the show, Justin. Thanks for having me, guys. One of our uh, favorite cannabis-oriented musicians. And uh, we have a hemp news segment for you tonight. Some video from Morocco looking uh, with strain hunters, folks from the greenhouse in Amsterdam. And uh, a few little show and tell items. We'll be taking your phone calls. Mr. Casper Leach is sitting here right beside me, ready to talk about all sorts of cannabis politics and time for him. And, but before that, as we always do, at least for a long time, we're gonna bring on our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. Da da. I feel the force. Here we're going with hemp news. One of the biggest hurdles, which for years has plagued the medical marijuana industry, is the lack of access to banking services for cannabis businesses. I've experienced several ups and downs with that myself in our clinics, which financial institutions just haven't been willing to accept them as customers because under federal law, the government views handling money from cannabis transactions as laundering drug profits. Now, with recreational legalization, the Washington State Liquor Control Board was in the same situation as has been faced for years by dispensaries. But now, the Bank of America has agreed to let them deposit marijuana profit, reports the Huffington Post. Bank of America has declared its willingness to deal with the new marijuana-related businesses, according to Jim McIntyre, treasurer for the state of Washington. According to McIntyre, he said, quote, I mean, in fact, we're already taking some tax revenues, I believe, for medical marijuana. So it's not a real issue in terms of their perception, end quote. The Washington Liquor Control Board's revenue stream will kick into gear this fall via applications for three different types of marijuana licenses, growing, processing, and retailing. And it will need a place to deposit all that money. McIntyre said his office has already had discussions and that Bank of America is fine with that and going to say they assure us that that's not a problem for them. Our uh, next story is a medical story. The frequency of marijuana use is not measurably associated with the utilization of health services or with health status, according to findings from researchers at Boston Medical Center, Boston University School of Medicine in Massachusetts. As the most popular illegal drug, the impact of cannabis upon health has become a hot topic as marijuana's legal status changes across the United States. The researchers studied 589 adults who showed up positive for drug use at a primary case visit. Those patients were asked about their drug use, emergency room use, and hospitalizations, and their overall health status. Information about other medical diagnoses was obtained from their medical records. The researchers found that the vast majority of the study sample, 84%, used marijuana, 25% used cocaine, 23% used opioids, and 8% used other drugs. 58% reported using cannabis, but no other drugs. No differences were found between daily marijuana users and those using no marijuana, whether looking at emergency room visits, at hospitalizations, at medical diagnoses, or overall health status. It is common for users of illicit drugs to use both cannabis and another drug, according to researchers. Therefore, knowing the incremental effects of marijuana upon health in such a situation is important. According to uh, lead author Daniel <coughs> Foster, MD, a postdoctoral scholar from the Clinical Addiction Research and Education Unit at uh, Boston Medical Center, he said, quote, even though we could not compare marijuana users to those who use no drugs at all, 
Our findings suggest that marijuana use has little measurable effect on self-reported health or health care utilization in adults using drugs identified in a primary care clinic." End quote. The findings appear online in the Journal of General Internal Medicine. Our next story tonight is out of London in the United Kingdom. The administration of THC, the primary psychoactive component in cannabis, modulates emotional processing in healthy volunteers according to placebo-controlled crossover trial data published online by the European Journal of Neuropsychopharmacology. Investigators from the United Kingdom and the Netherlands perform functional magnetic resonance imaging, or MRIs, on 11 healthy male subjects. Following the administrations of THC or placebo, the researchers assessed the subject's brain activity during their exposure to stimuli with a negative, fearful face content or a positive, happy face content. They hypothesized that THC administration would reduce subjects' negative bias in emotional processing and shift it toward a positive bias. Surprise, surprise. A bias toward negative stimuli had been linked to a diagnosis of certain mental illnesses, such as depression. As anticipated, the authors reported reduced brain activity after THC administration when subjects process stimuli with a negative emotional content. Conversely, researchers reported increased brain activity following the THC administration when subjects process stimuli with positive emotional content. They concluded, quote, these results indicate that THC administration reduces the negative bias in emotional processing. This adds human evidence to support the hypothesis that the endocannabinoid system is involved in modulation of emotional processing. Our findings also suggest a role for endocannabinoid system in abnormal emotional processing and may thus be relevant for psychiatric disorders such as major depression." End quote. For more information, you can go to the full text of this study, The Endocannabinoid System and Emotional Processing, a Pharmacological MRI Study uh, with 9 tetrahydrocannabinol and it will appear in the European Journal of Psychopharmacology. Our next story tonight is from Sydney, Australia. Cannabis use is not a significant contributor to the global burden of disease, according to an epidemiological review published in the British medical journal The Lancet. An international team of researchers from Australia and the United States assessed the global prevalence of illicit drug use and quantified its adverse effects on health as measured in years of life lived with disability, or YLDs, and years of life lost, or YLLs, and disability adjusted life years. The investigators reported that more people were likely to be dependent on opioids and amphetamines than other controlled substances, and that overall illicit drug use was responsible for 0.9% of the uh, disability adjusted life years. Tobacco smoking was estimated to cost 6.3% of the disability adult life years worldwide, and alcohol was estimated to cost 3.9%. By contrast, the researchers reported that regular, regular cannabis use made a very small contribution to disease burden through its contribution as a risk factor for schizophrenia, a link which is acknowledged to be controversial in an accompanying commentary since existing research on the plant's potential association with the disease is not yet definitive. In re total, the researchers estimated that 13.1 million people globally are dependent on cannabis, including 1.8 million people in North America. Investigators estimated that 15.5 million people worldwide were dependent on opioids and 17.2 million were dependent on amphetamines. The full text of this study, Global Burden of Disease Attributable to Illicit Drug Use and Dependence, Findings from a Global Burden of Disease Study 2010, appears in The Lancet. That's our last story tonight. We're going to jump over to Justin James Bridges. How are you doing, Justin? Doing pretty good. Doing good, y'all. What song have you got for us tonight? I'm going I'm to start off with Pain, and then I think I'm going to end off tonight with that uh, Muddy Waters song you've been wanting to hear. The oh, I, one of my favorite old ones, Reefer Man. This next one is called uh, Pain. All right. Pain, it's not the answer. Oh, but sometimes it'll make you questions, right? Pain teaches a lesson or like anything else in this life. A couple of cheese of 
is what I'm dabbing every day just to get another chance at relief from so much pain. And I got no words waiting to go sing this on the day. But as for pills, you know I got some other things to say. See, morphine, hydrocodone, Xanax, and Oxycontin. Tens of thousands dead each year, big pharma shows are signed to stop. And now's the time to come together, time for us to end this nonsense. Free the weed and vaporate, legalize cannabis. Pain, it's not the answer. Oh, but sometimes it'll make you question, try. Life. Wake up in the morning, almost every day's the same Eyes overcome with familiarity of pain And I start to contemplate different thoughts to get away But with our result, with this, some doubts, my feelings start to change See, this pain I feel today is something that you wouldn't expect But those who made me feel this way Took the oath to serve and check with Western doctors Pharmaceuticals are surely coming next Not for me, I'll take my dabs and all this lovely cannabis Pain, it's not the answer Oh, but sometimes It'll make you question what's right Pain teaches a lesson Unlike anything else in this life Pain if this was TV, it'd be funny to see how much is caused by greed for fake money. Prohibition, keeping cures from the ages. You know the reasons will for ignorance and pure hatred. Now this is for the masses and you know that I am speaking truth. Educate for freedom, use your voice and now it's up to you to miss the Emory and all the victims of the drug or we salute. Promise never to forget all the pain that you went through. Pain, it's not the answer. Oh, but sometimes it'll make you question what's right. Pain. Teaches a lesson on like anything else in this life. Pain, it's not the answer. Oh, but sometimes it'll make you question what's right. Pain teaches a lesson on like anything else in this life. Pain. Right. Thank you very much, guys. You can catch me tonight. I'm headed after this. I'm going over to the uh, pub at the end of the universe for the uh, their uh, final showdown. We had a competition for open mics over the summer, and uh, I was one of the winners. And so I'm competing for uh, the chance to uh, win the showdown tonight. It's a hundred dollar cash prize and a gift pack from a uh, guitar center. So all right, well, good luck. Nice. Thank you very much. How many people are you competing with? Uh, in I think the there's finals? eight others. Okay, so. so get down there and give uh, Justin a hand. Thanks, guys. All right, welcome, Casper. Thank you. It's been a couple of weeks since our Hipstock Festival. And, How was uh, Spain? I went to Spain and spoke at the uh, uh, Expo Grow uh, .net, uh, conference. It was fantastic. It was right on the border of Spain and uh, France in uh, the Basque Country in uh, San Sebastian is the Spanish name wow. for the town, but the Basque people call it Donostia. Well, I got asked, with you there, I know you, you and your lovely wife, as I've celebrated so much, many years of love. Tell me, is it true that overseas it's so romantic that you can just smell love in the air? Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice. that's true. Nice. So, uh, and did it smell like ganja? Uh, there was some ganja, especially at that Expo Grows. Where then there I was love more of the it. There was a lot of ganja there. Nice. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I had the honor of being on a panel with not only the drug minister of Uruguay, wow. who's introducing legalization, Julio Cadenas, uh, but also with uh, some folks from the greenhouse in Amsterdam, Arjun Roskam and Franco Lapa. And in fact, they gave us a lot of DVDs. So we'll have some cool. film clips from a television show that they've been producing called Strain Hunters, going oh, yeah. out and looking right. for cannabis strains. And a couple little show and tell items to show from that. Nice. So we'll see what comes from that. And does it smoke different or they get different strains when you walk around and they go, oh, Hill, you try this. Then you go, oh my God, I want to try that. I mean, can you smell it clear across? I mean, is it unique? Do they got something more exotic than we have here? No. They've got some good herb, but uh, ours is just as good, if not better. So uh, uh, it's probably stories I shouldn't go into in its oh. entirety right here. But, you know, uh, uh, we had a very good time. We had a very nice, good time. Nice. 
So we are live tonight. This is our 703rd show wow. since 1996. And you can call us. We'll take your questions and comments. We have a live studio audience uh, uh, clapping here in the background. Thank you, folks. Uh, if you have a question or comment about ending adult marijuana prohibition, uh, restoring industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients, then you can call us right here tonight live on uh, uh, the 27th of September. If you're not watching on the 27th of September, don't try to call this number. But if you are, you can call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We'll be taking your calls right up to the top of the hour. We also stream live on the internet. You can watch us live on Ustream. We've been down off Ustream for a few weeks, but uh, we want to say hello to Rhode Island and Texas and California and Pennsylvania and Washington State. You're all out there watching us on Ustream. And uh, if you have any friends out there that might want to see the show, you can tell them to tune in now. And so uh, uh, we had a very good time over there. But, you know, before we left, we had a very successful hemp stock festival. Yes, we did. We had probably yes, we about 75,000 people come over the two days of that event back on the uh, 7th and 8th of September. And we launched our petition drive. And so now we're up to uh, almost 10,000 signatures on two different initiatives. One is a constitutional initiative that's very simple. It has two sentences to amend Oregon's constitution that says that people can possess, use, and grow cannabis and its derivatives and that the state can regulate it for public safety. So that's our constitutional initiative. It's simply two sentences. We're gathering signatures on that right now. Then we have a revision of last year's Measure 80. We uh, had taken the big poll on Measure 80 and got 47 percent statewide, 61 percent of the vote here in Multnomah County and 63 percent of the vote in the city of Portland. So uh, we revised it slightly to deal with some of the issues that came up during the campaign. And that is initiative number 22. Initiative number 21 is our constitutional amendment. Initiative number 22, I'll call the uh, child of Measure 80. It's a revision of Measure 80. And both of those are in circulation right now. If you want to get petitions, you can print them uh, and you can pick up uh, uh, petitions at our office there at 2712 Northeast Sandy. Uh, we certainly need your help. We uh, also have a, a team of young folks going door to door and raising money. And we're happy to report that over 2,000 Oregonians have contributed over $50,000 over the past three months to launch our petition drive. And uh, another donor who uh, has given on marijuana related issues nationwide has also pledged uh, a half million dollars to help us put the marijuana initiatives on the ballot. So uh, we are uh, getting ready to, to launch a paid petition drive and we currently have and, and, uh, volunteer petitioners working. What's the name of my new best friend so I can write him and <laughs> find out where we can start hanging out together? There's just so many of them. Well, so okay, fine. It's, the const it's, it's Michael Kleinman. Thank you, Michael. I'm up for and, adoption. And uh, the, the Foundation for Constitutional Protection oh, cool. out of Austin, Texas. Nice. That's the name of the foundation that's been uh, donating to our political committee. We have a political committee behind Initiative 21, uh, which is uh, the Constitutional Amendment. That's Help End Marijuana Prohibition. Okay. That's a nifty name because it, it, uh, it stands for hemp. Help and that was Jack Hare's marijuana. organization. Well, you know, Michael Kleinman worked as I did and you did too, closely with Jack Hare and uh, considered Jack a, a mentor and friend as That's did we. That's where I know him from. And so he also publishes Jack's book these days. And uh, uh, you can find out more right there. You, there's our toll-free number if you're outside of uh, the Portland area. And down below is our local number if you're inside the Portland area. If you'd like to get some of these nifty bumper stickers, just come by the office or uh, give us a call at 503-235-4606. Uh, so we're proud to have the initiative drives launched. Uh, uh, we're probably about 5% of the way there in our petition drives. Uh, we have until next July, but I'm really thinking we'll put these things on the ballot by January. Nice, nice. Well, we told the politicians, didn't we? If you don't do it, we will. And it doesn't look like the politicians are going to do it. And so. Paul Stanford's a man of his word. So that means what? 
we will. We're putting it on the ballot. Yep. If uh, and it doesn't look like they're going to. So our initiative will also restore hemp for fuel, fiber, food, and medicine, and uh, allow adults to grow their own without a license fee or registration. And uh, uh, the one significant change is last time we had four members out of the seven new cannabis commission to regulate the industry. We we're going to be uh, voted in by license holders. Okay. That apparently uh, caused a lot of flack in the campaign for Measure 80 last year. So we decided that to have all seven of the members of the new cannabis commission to be appointed by the governor. In fact, all the initial drafts of Measure 80 had them appointed by the governor, but a couple of people, uh, a couple of ladies here in the Portland area had argued that we shouldn't let the governor appoint those uh, commissioners. We should have some from our community. So at the last minute, we made that change in the last campaign, and that was obviously a mistake because that was the thing that was used against us in the campaign. Local newspaper editorialized that it was like putting Philip Morris in charge of the, right. the tobacco industry. Yeah, you well, it's not the same. You know, tobacco and cannabis are very different. Yeah, much, but, much uh, different. It also would have had hemp farmers being elected to that board as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, now the governor will appoint them, and uh, we'll see who runs for and is elected governor next year. That'll make a big uh, difference. Maybe I should run. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. That would uh, just really be just really interesting, to say the least. I agree. I All agree. Right. Uh, we have our first gay speaker of the House, Tina Kotek, uh, in the Oregon. You can be the first gay governor here in Oregon, too. You know, that'd be well, I just figured pot smoking, honest to the core, no, no whole bars back. I mean, you know, you can look at me. I've always been straightforward with you. So if I decided to run for governor, it's because one. It's time for him. It's time for him. And I always operate in love and you know that. So if I decide to throw my hat in the ring, it's because I love the people in the state and I want to see the patients get their medication. And Paul talked me into it uh, over <laughs> a good joint. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just something that a very spontaneous, uh, topic there where there this go. was not planned okay to tell our audience members now if you have a question for us tonight you can call us at that number on your screen it's 503-288-4442 that's 503-288-4442 now i know you've had some exciting developments with your oh my radio show time for hemp you want to tell may our I? may i you may thank you i have i've had a really exciting a couple of weeks Right before I went to the Seattle Hemp Fest to, to speak, uh, iHeartRadio approved my, I thought, show. And it turned out that they approved more than my show. I was given what's known as station status. Uh, I didn't know what that meant at first. And then I got somebody to point it out to me. That means that I can broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I thought, well, why would I want to do that with a one hour show? So somebody hit me in the back of the head again and I realized, thank you, wow. So what's happening starting in October, every Friday, Steve Bloom's gonna be doing a celeb stoner report, like an entertainment report. We're, every Tuesday, Thursday, we're gonna have a Spanish version of Time for Hemp. Uh, the Time for Hemp, Monday through Friday Who's doing show, the Spanish version? Mike Bafari. Okay. And Pony Boy's gonna From be- From Venezuela. The, yes, and Chile. He's gonna be bringing that into those, those, those countries. And then Pony Boy's gonna be doing um, some other expanding broadcasting on the programming as well. Michael cool. Kravitz is gonna bring an international program on Sundays. And he knows two people that will bring to the programming, one, a German version of Time for Hemp, and the other, a French version of Time for Hemp. So when all is said and done, we'll have Spanish, French, German, and English will be reaching into those communities with paper, fiber, fuels, and medications. So that message will be going out. And so you can go to your website at timeforhemp.com well, and find out more? It is, it's becoming now not just the timeforhemp.com show, it's the Time for Hemp Broadcasting Network. We're gonna king a pot, we're gonna do an hour long uh, uh, global news broadcast. We're going to be having you as an anchor. We're going to have King of Pot as anchor. Chris Bennett, people from around the world will be making contributions to that. So we're just launching next month about five hours a day of brand new content from the hardworking members of the marijuana movement. And then we're just going to grow and expand. 
And uh, we've been told by IDAD, uh, uh, GoDaddy today that we're getting so many hits on our servers and what's going to happen starting next month that we now have to go to a dedicated server because we're just getting so much noise and we're right. getting so much attention. Well, so, congratulations. Yeah, thank you and thank you to everybody who's given us attention and paid, uh, paid mind to our hard work. And remember the next time you see us, it's time for hemp. And it's the National Broadcast Now, we have Network a couple now. of phone calls that yeah. are standing by. Let's go ahead and take one of those calls. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello. I call. think that's me. That's you. Hi, hi Paul. Hi, hi, Casper. This is Michael Krowitz. I think thought I recognized that voice. <laughs> How are you, Michael? You in Virginia? I'm doing great. I, I want to thank you so much for inviting uh, Veterans for Medical Cannabis Access and, and you know, myself to come and speak at Hempstock. It was really a pleasure and an honor. It was a pleasure having you there. And uh, I, I really called up with an ulterior motive here. I uh, wanted to touch base. I'm really uh, uh, very proud and honored to, uh, to be part of Casper's uh, lineup there, and I think that's really great. I'm really looking forward to trying to get these uh, international shows lined up. But I wanted to talk to you all just really, really briefly. Uh, it's come to my attention now that the new post-traumatic stress uh, qualification under Oregon's medical marijuana law uh, is now going to be taking an effect in January, but they are already in October, I'm told, uh, will be taking the recommendation. So if you, if you can go see a doctor and, uh, you know, somehow routinely your time timing lines up with after October seeing your doctor for your routine uh, doctor. Yeah, that's 90 days. And cannabis, and and these that. applications are good for submission within 90 days. So any time after October 1st would be within 90 days of January 1st. Yep, so we're really excited about that and uh, just wanted to bring attention to that. And thank That's everyone. good. So if someone's out there who thinks they need help with medical marijuana for post-traumatic stress, then uh, you can uh, start getting your paperwork. Once you submit your paperwork, by the way, you're covered under Oregon's law. And you don't have to be an Oregon resident to get an Oregon medical marijuana permit. So we've had more and more people coming from around the country, from Texas, Wisconsin, all over the country to get an Oregon permit at our clinics here in Oregon. Well, and when they come here, there's a lot of great places for them to visit. Like there's a great wellness center downtown on First Street, and there's uh, uh, Nikki's Diggity Dank that they can stop by and visit, and there's Potlandy as a good place to stop by and say there's hello. So lots of dispensaries, and yeah. more and more will be springing up as the state begins to regulate those. Hey, so you know, Michael, I-, just I, I Debbie go Goldberry ahead. tonight on her uh, uh, medical uh, marijuana radio hour. Uh -huh. And uh, she was talking about down there in Nevada, they're finally putting in their dispensaries. So right. if you want to go down there, they, they have reciprocation as well. So that sounds really cool. <laughs> we have a little bit more of the country each time a reciprocating state adds. Mm -hmm. So I also wanted, I saw that you were able to attend that uh, memorial for uh, our friend Jean Marlowe who passed away uh, uh, earlier this month. And yeah, uh, it, as I mentioned indeed, to you. Gene had come up and, and, and worked a little bit or lived at our outdoor marijuana garden, and uh, we wanted to, to honor her memory here tonight as well. Well, thank you for that. You know, Gene was a really important part of our uh, local activism, but also nationwide. You know, a lot of people leaned on her, people like uh, Chris Conrad and Mickey Norris that we lean on. Uh, they leaned on her, you know, as part of the network of, of uh, shared uh, knowledge and, and uh, understanding of, of, of just, uh, you know, the human race that we gained from, from uh, someone like Gene that we, is just uh, uh, irreplaceable. And Gene had been fighting for medical marijuana in North Carolina. I went to high school in Asheville, North Carolina, and she lived about 60 miles uh, east of there. So we were uh, uh, kindred spirits from the same part of the country. Well, it was, a, it was a beautiful gathering, and there was music. And if you go on Facebook and uh, you look up the memorial, the, the, the uh, link on Facebook now has uh, several links that Irv Dargan put up of videos that are just fantastic. And uh, you can kind of visit with her and, and uh, you know, share some of, some of her, her uh, tracks. She went much too early. We all she had a, a terminal disease, but uh, now uh, we know she's up there dancing in spirit. For sure. Anyway, thanks for calling, Michael. Anything else you want to say in closing? No, just uh, thanks for keeping up all hard work out there, and I look forward to visiting with you when I can. I, I love being out in Oregon, and uh, I, I miss you all, and uh, wish you well. All right. Well, we hope you get back out here pretty soon. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks. I think we have another phone call standing by. Welcome to the show, caller. 
Hi, Paul. Hi, Casper. It's Nikki. How are you, Nikki? Happy I'm Friday. Doing, happy Friday, you guys. I'm doing great. I'm glad to see you guys back. Thank you. Thank you. We well, missed you. Well, we're glad to be back. Uh, I like traveling, so we had a really good time, but uh, uh, we're glad to be back, too. I'm glad. Hey, I just wanted to let all the OMMP cardholders know that there's a Nikki's Diggity Dank Market coming up this Sunday at Alternative Wellness from 10 to 7. There's your little flyer that's magically appeared on my desk when I rolled into to the show moments before it started here. Uh, and I, I went to the last two, and I had a lot of fun. There's a lot of nice vendors there. There's great... Uh, edibles there, uh, and there's a, a wonderful uh, uh, atmosphere, great music that, that just, just makes you want to dance and sing. And can I say something really exciting, Casper? Yes, ma'am. Say something really exciting. We I'm excited are already. Nikki's Diggity Dank and Alternative Wellness is now a new advertiser at iHeartRadio with that. Time right. for Hemp. And All right. Like, thank you so much. And cool. we are thrilled to be on it, and I'm so thrilled to be with Casper. And I want to tell you guys that we're featuring roast, roach artist Cliff Maynard this Sunday. So if you guys get a chance to come on out and get him, get to see what he gets to do with those roaches, it's pretty cool. He takes the little roach papers and creates neat images with them. It's pretty yes. unique art. He's spectacular. So I'd love to see all the OMMP friends down here, you guys. And I'm just glad to see you guys back on there. Glad to be back. Thank and you I will for be calling. there for sure on Sunday. And I hope everybody in the area who's looking for a wonderful You know, time I know we had our, our picnic for the Hemp Stock Festival volunteers coming up on Sunday as well. But my understanding is there's going to be heavy rain on Sunday. So uh, Move maybe we there. can go somewhere else. Move it to Nikki's Diggity Dike. There's there a good you idea. go. <laughs> Everybody come to the market. Love to see them all. All right. Well, thanks for calling. All right, you guys. Take care, and you guys have, have a, a wonderful night. night. You too. Bye -bye. We have more phone calls standing by. Let's take one of those phone calls. Welcome to the show, caller. How you doing, Paul? Very well. How are you? Not too bad. Uh, good seeing you again. Casper, thank you for a wonderful job you're doing. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate it. Yeah, good to see you there, Paul. Uh, Thank you. Haven't seen you in a while. Thank well, you for all the good work you're doing. You're very welcome as well. We keep plugging away. We've got our two petitions out there circulating. So if you're a registered Oregon voter, please uh, get one of our petitions down at our office at 2712 Northeast Sandy or uh, give us a call at 503-235-4606 and we'll be happy to mail you some. Yeah, not a problem. I have to uh, come down and see you here next week anyhow All at right. the uh, clinic. Well, they're not far apart. No, they're not. Did uh, you have a question or any other comment? Nope, just wanted to let you know uh, how proud I was for you doing your good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Glad we can help you with the medical marijuana permit, too. That's what keeps us afloat and able to do all our political work. So thank you for yeah. coming in and helping our business. And it keeps me out of pain. Great. Glad to do it. It's an honor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, you know, Paul, you. it really does mean a lot. The audience takes time to let us know that they do appreciate our, our message giving. And sometimes I clown up here and wonder if anybody's paying any mind, you know, to our trying to reach out and tell them about paper, fiber, fuel, and the pain for those who need it. Reach out to those behind bars and send them letters of love so they're not forgotten. And when someone's nice enough to come out, call in and acknowledge just with a thank you, for what we're doing that really does mean a lot so that's true i appreciate being acknowledged for your on your good work let's so. go ahead and take another caller standing by welcome to the show caller hello howdy howdy d stoudemire here and i'm wondering if you can give me some instruction on where i can obtain a license i've just moved here from california okay and i understand my california license is not valid here in oregon it that's right. You have to have an Oregon license in Oregon. There are several reciprocity states, but Oregon, unfortunately, is not one of them. But Oregon is the only state where a state agency will issue out-of-state residents a medical marijuana permit. But now that you live here, you might as well have one for sure. But we have, we have doctor, you know, 
this is a cable access show, so we're not allowed to really go into commercial details, but we do have a physician referral service and a clinic. You can give us a call at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. Or you can call the clinic directly at 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. Are you allowed to give me an idea what the fees are? The well, yeah, the state charges a fee that is $200. If you name someone else as your caregiver, then you have to pay an extra $50 to the state of Oregon for uh, your license. So it's $200 unless you're on some sort of public assistance. If you are, then there might be a discount at the state level. Uh, if you're on uh, SSI, I believe it is, that fee can go be as low as $20 a year. There's still that $50 fee if you name someone else as your grower. Does it, does it require a doctor visit as well? Or yeah, how does it requires a doctor visit on an annual basis. And there's a charge for that. It's over and above the 200 Yes, it is. The doctor, of course, doesn't get anything from the state for seeing patients. So, And again, I can't go into a lot of the commercial aspects, and it changes from entity or business to business. But uh, we'd certainly be proud to help you. Uh, we... Uh, uh, our, our clinic uh, uh, helps fund legalization efforts here in Oregon and things like the Seattle Hemp Fest and the Hemp Stock Festival as well. So your support at our clinic uh, has uh, uh, progressive political uh, uh, overtones. What a warm welcome to Oregon. Yeah, welcome home. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. Thanks for calling. We have a film clip we're going to roll, and we'll be back in just a second. So I hope you uh, enjoy this, and uh, we'll be back. Are we going to vape out now, too? No. Oh. Not yet. Soon. Yeah, that's the plan. And these are the maps. This one is Malana Valley. doesn't drop from your fingers so sticky it is. It's, it's incredible. And so intense the aroma. You can smell in it the, the mountains. You can smell a little bit of resin from pine trees, a little bit. It's so complex, it's incredible. The place in India where we are going in the mountains, it's famous for its charas. How is it made? This is one of the reasons that we are going to this place is this, this is one of the few places in the world where they make the hash from live plants. This is the best cream produced in the Himalayas, and we're gonna make sure that when we come back, we will bring back with us the knowledge, the precious knowledge that Franco Casalone and that many other people have about that area and about this kind of quality. This is, this is cannabis cup winner quality stuff. For me, it's very interesting and very nice, but to go back in India and to work to make something for this plant, because I told you, for me, it's my life.
The Indian expedition started uh, with a really uh, cool trip from Amsterdam. After a great dinner and a good night of sleep, we went to the airport, boarded the KLM flight, and in eight hours we were in India. Simon! No way, Simon! Fortunately, our great friend Simon was waiting for us in Chokhi. Came all the way from Africa, and it's always a surprise do people arrive on time or not. We travel long distances to meet each other, and communication is quite difficult sometimes. So it was really a cool experience and a cool thing to find him there waiting for us. At the temple there was a, a ceremony going on, so in, uh, in our honor and in honor of the Shiva, god of Charas, we witnessed this ceremony. Also very important is traditional cultures here in India. Um, it was a suggestion from our uh, Sherpa here, Chapu. We also decided to um, offer a goat to the gods for our well-being into the mountains. And it was pretty amazing, pretty unique, uh, quite intense experience. You could really feel the vibration of, of something special in the air. Look at this church. This church, yeah. See that? This is church. Wow. The first ones in India. It's a bit covered Look in the Russian, eh? Man. Yeah, man. These are these are the original color seeds, man. Look, look at this. Incredible. This green one. Yeah. This one, eh? No, 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 no. Uh, green, green, green. Green. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Church. Yeah, green. Uh, this side. Yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one here, oh, no. lemon haze. What do you think about all the females? Because uh, it's only females, eh? Yeah, syrup larky boot. What do you say? These males are not good. This is the good part. 100% greenhouse feminized quality. No doubt. In the Himalayas. In the Himalayas. All right, so that's a little excerpt from Strain Hunters, a show from uh, one of the seed, many seed uh, distributors. You know, I went to this conference in uh, the Basque Country in Spain, in San Sebastian or Donostia, called Expo Grow. You can find out more at expogrow.net. But out of probably 150 vendors there, there must have been 40 or 50 seed companies. And Greenhouse, of course, was one of the biggest ones. They have put out this new series called Strain Hunters, and this is just an excerpt from, from one of those. This is uh, their uh, uh, show from India. You can find out more about them at strainhunters.com. That's strainhunters.com. Now they gave me this little DVD, and I haven't opened it up yet, but once I got it, I kind of was worried about bringing it back because it's got 10 marijuana seeds. See if you can close in on this camera too, and we'll see, see it's got these 10 marijuana seeds and a little price there of 32 euros. That's about 45, 50 dollars there. But uh, it comes with, I don't know, I, I you know, it's just a grow? little gift. Are you gonna try no, I don't think so. I'm going to leave it in his package. It's just a collector's I mean, I'd be part curious of our. What came out of them. It would be curious, but uh, I like the strains we have, so we'll just uh, uh, let it go on that. Let's say that. And then next to this, we have. This old Eli Lilly fluid extract of cannabis bottle. This is circa 1915. It's a full quart bottle and uh, it's pretty nice. Now right next to that, over here we have the whole reason that marijuana is illegal. This is hemp oil burning hemp twine and it's a hemp lamp. The first illuminant that people started using many years ago, uh, at least 20,000, maybe 30 or 40,000 years ago. So 
this is why marijuana is illegal. The energy companies made up all the propaganda, gave us the word marijuana. Everyone knew what hemp was, but they didn't know back in the 30s what this new marijuana was. But it was actually the old ancient crop hemp. And hemp marijuana prohibition has always been about fuel and fiber and money and power and the continued centralization of economic and political control. And so this is our little illustration of that for, for our viewers. And you have this nifty thing of hemp twine. We just take a little snippet of that, stick it in that oil, and we've got the, the hemp uh, flame of freedom. Then last but not least, we have our bumper stickers. Hemp, help in marijuana prohibition in Oregon. We have our two petition drives going. You can get involved in those petition drives. Just give us a call at 503-235-4606, or if you're outside the Portland area, you can call that toll-free number for our political committee. And CRRH is our uh, over handling the Oregon campaign, and we've been doing the fundraising. If you have somebody come knock at your door saying they represent CRRH, you can know that uh, that money will be used to help fund our petition drives. We appreciate your support. Okay. So, uh, if you have a question or comment for us tonight, give us a call at that number on the screen. We've got about uh, 12 minutes left to go, so we'll be taking phone calls for another five or six minutes. I got a question. Go ahead. What's going on with my bro, Eric Holder? He's, he's like backpedaling on his statements that he thinks it's okay, that he's not going to arrest. Maybe he won't arrest. Now nah, we think the mandatory minimum is too silly. What's he up to? I don't know, Casper. You know, he doesn't check in with me. No. But... Uh, you know, I'm very happy that he, he made the statement that they're not going to stop and enjoy the laws in Washington and, and uh, Colorado. That's a huge step forward. It really opens the door for full regulation and legalization, and I never would have believed it was true. But uh, I got to say that I, if the Obama administration, you know, I've been disappointed about a lot of things with the Obama administration, but this is one that has made me very happy. And we know if Mitt Romney had been elected, this would never happen. The federal government would be quashing everything it could in Colorado and in Washington State. So we can be glad that we have Obama there because he's allowed us to, to move forward with marijuana legalization. So got to thank him and uh, 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 all the people involved in that. Well, I thought I will, uh, uh, Eric Holder, you want to come on to my network and do a little show about how you guys were wrong and bring on you know the agents one week at a time and they can apologize to the public for arresting people we can make that happen we'll even get sponsors for it right i think if if that happened yeah. we could definitely get sponsors for it give me a call okay good luck with that thank you <laughs> so uh let's see there are a couple phone calls standing by let's go ahead and take a caller welcome to the show caller hi this is me that's you. Oh, okay. Look, I was just wondering if you guys have ever tried mailing in or ordering any seeds from Canada and getting them in through the mail. Has that worked for you? Some people it works for and some doesn't. I've never tried to order any through the mail. Uh, I've heard of people who've uh, received them, and I've heard of people who've had the government seize them too. So uh, if that's your only option, then it's probably better than nothing. But... Uh, uh, it, it is fraught with some risk. Are there any seed dispensaries around this area, do you know? You know, if or you have a medical permit, there's a lot of different dispensaries that will be happy to get you seeds or clones. I prefer clones myself because you have a known quantity. There's a lot of variation in even the same seed stock. So uh, you can get seeds at clones if you have a medical permit for most of the uh, dispensaries here in town. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. And I tell people I'm busy in the media promoting the movement. I don't have time to grow, so I'm not in production, i.e. growing. Mm -hmm. I'm in public relations. All right. Well, I'm in both, but, uh, you know, I, uh, we grow and give away free marijuana to a number of patients, mostly indigent, highly disabled patients, and we're proud to be able to do that. And, again, that is financed by people coming to our clinics and uh, uh, helping... Uh, uh, keep that thing going so we're uh, we also have clones and, and things to help that we give away for folks as many as we can so that's another option 
So uh, in the coming weeks, uh, our petition drive continues. We'd love to get you involved in that. If you are interested in helping us gather some of these signatures, please call us at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. And you can go to our website at crrh.org. That's our political committee or our web portal all of our various sites at hemp.org, that's H-E-M-P dot O-R-G. And if you go to slash news at H-E-M-P dot org slash news, we are updating that with about 40 to 50 new news stories on marijuana all around the world at our Hemp News website. We also are up to about 325,000 followers on our Facebook page. You can find that at facebook.com slash Restore Hemp. That's facebook.com slash restore hemp. We'll get uh, involved in all of our efforts. So, Casper, is there anything uh, we're going to come and close here in a few more minutes? We've got. Yes, uh, I just want to let people know that we're at timeforhemp.com. Now that we are a station and a network, we're going to get louder and louder. And you're going to know all around the world that it's time for hemp. And we're going to end prohibition. We're going to be making paper fiber fuel out of this fantastic plant, creating jobs for people, having industries in our backyard and you're going to be able to talk about it every day 24 hours a day at timeforhemp.com oh i should calm down so yeah yeah we're, we're getting excited about the new changes join us at timeforhemp.com that's great and you can tune in to this show just about every week here at uh, uh eight o'clock pacific time uh and you can see us on ustream.tv or uh, uh, look for our repeats on YouTube. We have hundreds of shows, literally hundreds of shows on Ustream, on, on YouTube, YouTube, Ustream, whichever video downloading service you prefer. So uh, we're going to go out with some music from Justin James Bridges. He's got one of my favorite old songs. I think it's a Cab Calloway song. Uh, uh, I'm doing a Champagne and Reef for Muddy oh. Waters. A Muddy Water song. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. And, uh, got another, uh, just released my uh, latest album on July 10th. I got another one coming out before the end of the year. So it's three albums coming out this year. Nice. All right. Nice. So. We want to thank our viewers, and uh, we'll be back next week. I'm still a little jet lagged. Uh, just landed Wednesday night, okay. so uh, less than 48 hours ago. But uh, uh, tune in next week, and remember to help us restore him. <laughs> Go right ahead, Justin. Say, give me champagne when I'm thirsty. Yeah, give me a reef when I want to get high. Say, give me champagne when I'm thirsty. Yeah, give me a reef when I want to get high. Well, when I'm feeling lonely, bring my woman, set her right here down by my side. You know that shouldn't be no long. It's nobody wanna smoke a little dough. You know that shouldn't be no long. Yeah, can somebody just wanna smoke a little dough? You know it's good for your head, it relax your body, don't you know? down on my baby's breast Yeah, I'ma lay down be quiet Yeah, just trying to give me my rest Well, my 
my baby, she give me hugs, she give me kisses. Says, JJ, you the one I love the best. You know I'ma get so high, yeah, just as high as you know my name. Well, I'ma get so high this morning, yeah, just might be a crying shame. Well, I'll be sticking to my reefer, and catch me messing around with her.